God is good, amen? Yeah. Amen. Dude, um, you guys, that was such a beautiful response in worship um, to our God, amen? Yeah. Now, now, some of you, you know, some of you may, may be still a little bit hesitant, you know, you're like, I don't, I don't know about this whole God thing, but listen, you know, I see promise. I see promise that you, you, there's going to be an amazing response. Why do I know this? Is because um, <clears throat> earlier when uh, they were playing Taylor Swift, Shake It Off, you all didn't know this, but there was a camera going around, and we could see you backstage. <laughs> so I was watching as you guys had no idea you were being filmed, and we were watching, and I saw some youth minister, I think over here somewhere, like with gray hair that was just <laughs> right there. <laughs> And he was just like, yeah, shake it up. And it was amazing. So, like, I know that it is possible, like, for our response to be completely free and, you know, it, it just it, with reckless abandon. And I, I know we'll get there because I saw you guys dance to Taylor Swift, shake it off. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good. Okay. You know, we respond, we respond so well to music. And it, it really literally moves us, right? And, and we love dance songs. Um, but the songs that we respond to the most... I love songs, right? I mean, you all, you all know love songs. If I, if I tested you, I, I know you guys would all know these songs. So, friends, complete these uh, sentences. All of me loves all your, all your perfect. Right. So you all know this song, and some of you were like, oh, my gosh, that's going to be my wedding song. Okay, yeah. Yeah, or, or, or if I sang, uh, I belong with you, you belong with me, you're my. Yeah, some of you were like, wait, I still don't know if it's you're my pop tart. You're like, <laughs> you're my Walmart. Okay, you're my sweetheart. Okay, yeah, so, so we, we know these love songs and we sing them. Why? Because we were made for love. Like inherently, we know that we were meant for this great authentic love, not some wimpy love, you know, not a love that lasts like, you know, a very little time. Like, for instance, ladies, ladies, if a guy wrote you a love song and he was like, girl, I want to love you for two weeks. <laughs> you'd be like, oh, no, you didn't. I will cut you. Got to go. Okay. Security, security. Okay. Yeah. You would pull out the Puerto Rican bone quick. We'd be like, oh, my gosh, seriously, who do you think you are? You don't know me, Santa Maria, Madre de Dios. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Ladies, you know, I, I didn't quiz you. I didn't quiz you, and I didn't ask you, you know, um, like, you know, be mad when I say two weeks. Because, ladies, how long were you meant to be loved for? Forever. Like, you inherently know this. You know you weren't meant to be loved for two weeks, two days, two hours. We were meant to be loved forever. And every single human being, we know this inherently, right? We know that we were made for a love that lasts forever. We also know... You know, we, we sing these love songs, and we love them. We're, like, crying. We're like, Taylor Swift, you just know me. Okay, so we do. Um, but then, oh, man, when, when we are hurt, when we are, when we are not loved, when someone cheats on us, betrays us, abandons us, uses us, abuses us, oh, man, we write really angry songs, and we're like, I dug my key into the side of its pretty little soup tub. And you're like, girl, girl. On a scale of one to Adele, how angry are you? Okay, <laughs> for reals. Because again, inherently, I did not have to tell you this, but inherently we know as human beings, we weren't meant to be cheated on, betrayed. We weren't meant to be used, abused, abandoned. And so we know, it, oh, it hurts. It goes so deep, that hurt. Because we know that we were meant for an authentic love that lasts forever. And we know this, we see this, we know this in our hearts, that every single one of us was meant to be loved, and every one of us was meant to give love. That is why we are here on this earth, is to be loved, to give love, right? The greatest two commandments are what? To love God, to love your, and to love, right? These, this is the greatest thing, like on earth we are here to love. And we, all we got to do to know like why and how is we go back to the beginning of scripture. You know, the first book of the Bible is... Okay, in Genesis, we see in the beginning that God created the world out of love. You guys, because that's God's nature. That is who God is. God doesn't just love. God is love. It says in 1 John 4, 8, God is love. And God created the world out of that love. And, you know, we see in the beginning, you know, God, you know, created the moon and the stars and the sky, separated the sky from the sea, the land, from the water. 
And, you know, he created, you know, the creepy crawly things, the flying things. On the sixth day, God created the animals. And after the animals, God created who? Us, right? Human beings, it says in Genesis, God created the male and female in his image and likeness. You know what that means? We were created in the image and likeness of love. If God is love and we were made in his image and likeness, we were created in the image and likeness of God who is love. So every one of us was meant to be loved and to give love, whether you are Catholic, whether you are atheist, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever you are, we were all made in the image and likeness of God who is love. So deep down in the core, in our hearts, we know we ache for this love. And we see this as the story of Genesis gets a little more specific. It says that Adam was created first. And Adam was walking around looking for someone to love. And Adam had this ache in his heart to be loved. And it says this in scripture, and I don't know if you guys have read this carefully, but it's kind of funny and awkward. It says that Adam looked around at the animals to find a suitable partner. I was like, I think that's illegal. Okay. You know? <laughs> like, Adam looked around at the animals to find a suitable partner. And can you imagine, like, he goes to the giraffe and he's like, I want to cuddle with you. And the giraffe's like, I don't, actually, I don't know what sound a giraffe makes. Like, what does a giraffe say? I don't know. So... So the giraffe's like, ew, get away me, creep, you know. And, and Adam, you know, is looking and roaming around for love. And you realize, I come from a very musical family. For you older people, my family's like the Von Trapp family from Sound of Music, you know. Yeah. For, for, the, younger, <laughs> for the younger crowd, my family's like glee on crack, okay. So, so I always have a song going through my head. How many of you guys are like this? You always have a song going through your head. Okay, yes. I always have a song going through my head. So I imagine Adam is walking around the garden and he's like, I was roaming around, I was looking down, you know that I could use somebody. Or he's like, each morning I get up, I die a little. Can barely stand on my feet, take a look in the mirror and cry. Lord, what you doing to me? I have spent all my years believing you. I just can't get no relief. Oh, somebody, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Or he's like, I just need somebody to love. I, I don't need too much, just somebody to love. Even Bieber knows the ache of Adam, okay? Clearly, though, lately, Bieber has been looking for love in all the wrong places. Okay. We'll, we'll pray for Bieber. Okay. Mom and Mary. So, Bieber, I mean, Adam, was walking around the garden looking for someone to love. And God sees this. And God says, it is not good for man to be alone. And you know what's amazing? One of our greatest fears as human beings is that we're going to be alone. Like, we have this fear, like, no one's going to love us. You know, I'm going to be alone. For women, we're like, I don't want to be the cat lady. You know, we, like, have this fear. <laughs> maybe, maybe some of you guys have that fear, too. I don't want to be the cat man. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, Batman. Cat man. Okay, I don't know. So, you can wear a cape. I don't know. So, but we have this fear of being alone. And what's amazing is Adam was walking around the garden, and he knew he was alone. Because he knew that none of the animals were like him. They couldn't love him the way that he was meant to be loved. So who did God create? Woman. Okay. Whoa, man. Okay, that's, that's what it really means. But God created woman. And, and Adam's response was, at last, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. But you know what's amazing? In scripture, the love of a husband for his wife, and Adam and Eve, you know, are seen as like the first husband and wife in scripture. The love of a husband, a bridegroom for his bride, is the most used analogy to, to depict God's love for his people. That God loves us so much. He, he's, you know, like a bride, bridegroom loves his bride. And what's amazing, in the first book of the Bible, you have this, you know, you know Adam and Eve, the, the first man, woman. And what's amazing, it's actually pointing us to the last book of the Bible. What's the last book of the Bible? Revelation. Revelation is the last book of the Bible, and in Revelation, there's a different kind of wedding. And this time, the wedding is between who? Between Christ and the, and the church. This wedding is between Christ and the church. And what God is saying to us, what God is saying is, I want to spend eternity with you. 
I want to spend forever with you. So when you have that ache and longing in your heart to be loved forever, you know what's interesting? When I took my vows on my wedding day, I didn't say to my husband, I'm going to love you forever. I said, I will love you till what? Till... Yeah, some of us forget that. You know what's amazing? You know why? Because my relationship with my husband is actually pointing me towards a marriage, a wedding that's going to last for all eternity. And this wedding is going to be between us and God. In heaven, it's going to be a wedding feast, a celebration that we're going to be experiencing this joy, this union, that we were made for God. And nothing on this earth can satisfy a heart that was made for eternal love. Nothing on earth, no amount of popularity, success, no amount of money, sex, drugs, none of that can satisfy a heart that was made for eternity. God alone can satisfy that ache and that longing. And I remember when I was 22 years old, I had this memory of, uh, I was a youth minister in Ventura, California, and I remember I was sitting in my room praying, and I had this ache and this longing, and I thought this ache and this longing was for a husband. And I was like, Lord, you are the Lord of all. You are the King of kings. You could bring me my husband whenever you want. Wink, wink. You know, like, bring him now. You know, <laughs> but, but really, I thought, like, Lord, I just, I want someone to love me. I, I want this, like, a husband. And um, you know what's amazing? I did this Bible roulette, which, you know, you know, like when you open the Bible somewhere and you, like, put your finger. You guys, I do not recommend this, okay? Why? Because there are some weird scripture verses, okay? Like, I'll give you for example, like, if you're like, oh, I want to say something really nice to my boyfriend or my girlfriend, and you decide to do Bible roulette, you might end up on Psalm 38.8, which says, my loins burn with fever for you. <laughs> my flesh burns with affliction. <laughs> He's like, I think you need a cream for that, you know, so... Don't, don't, don't do Bible roulette, because there are some crazy scripture passages, but I took the chance, okay, I did not know this, I took the chance and did Bible roulette, and thankfully, out of the Psalms, I ended up on Psalm 63, and Psalm 63 says this, it says, oh God, you are my God, for you I long, for you my body yearns, for you my soul thirsts like a land that is parched lifeless and without water. So I look to you in the sanctuary to see your power and glory for your love is better than life. And at that moment I realized, Lord, it's not a husband I'm looking for, it's you. God, you're the reason why my body is aching for love. I'm longing, my soul is thirsting for you, God. Literally, my heart is aching. It feels like if someone's twisting it, it wants to explode because, God, you're the love that I'm looking for. And you know what's amazing is in this room, 13 years ago, I had my conversion. 13 years ago is when I experienced God's love for the first time, and it changed my life, and I never went back. And you know what's amazing? When I experienced God, and especially God is the good shepherd, God the Father, I remember thinking, God, I would give up anything for you because your love is better than life itself. God, I would give up having a family. God, if you want me to be celibate, I would do that for you. God, if you want me to give up a husband, a family, if you want me to give up my friends, God, I will do that because I want to get to heaven so bad. God, I want to spend eternity with you because God, I, know, I see your love now. I see that only your love can satisfy every longing of my heart. You know, in high school, I thought if I was popular, if I was successful, if I got good grades, if I had a boyfriend, I thought, okay, then I'll be happy. And you know what? I had those things. And there was something missing. And I realized that it was, it was God. It was God that I was missing. And you know, the theme, we talk about John 10.10, 10, and in John 10, God is the good shepherd. And some of us, when we think of the shepherd, we think of that song that we hear at funerals all, that time, all the time, right? Shepherd me, oh God, be all my words. And you always hear it at funerals, you're like, I don't want the shepherd, I'm going to die. You know, like, you're like, stay away from me, shepherd, right? Like, we have this image of the shepherd as, like, following us with, like, a, like a you know, those, the, the things, I can't even think of the, the, the what? 
thank you. So we're like, or like the <laughs> UN. I can't think of it. Um, mom brain. Okay, so, but we think of this, the sickle, right? Like the reaper, the grim reaper. And the shepherd is not like that. You know, we think of, you know, oh, the shepherd's going to shepherd us into death, which he will. But the shepherd, the, the image of the shepherd is so beautiful. The good shepherd who loves us here and now, the shepherd who is good. And it says in scripture, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I know mine, and they know me. You know what's so beautiful about that? On this earth, the person who knows me most intimately is my husband. He knows me and he loves me. He knows my bad days, my good days. He's seen me crying. He's seen me happy. You know, he's seen me go through childbirth. He's seen like all these things, all this, these sides of me. He's seen me angry, frustrated, joyful, prayerful. But you know what's even more amazing is that God, the good shepherd, I know mine and mine know me. He knows me a million times more than my husband could ever know me. Because God knew me since my conception. God formed me and knit me in my mother's womb. He knows every hair on my head and I have a lot of hair. <laughs> you guys, God knows you inside and out. God knows your thoughts and guess what? My husband doesn't know my thoughts and sometimes my thoughts I can be a pretty evil person. I'm serious, like all of us in this room have a great capacity for either good or evil. And God knows all of it, and he's still like, Jackie, I love you. I know when you can be a brat. I know when you can be beautiful, but I know when you also can be very ugly towards people and ugly towards yourself. And God sees all of it, and he's like, I love you. I love you and all that. And you know what? When I think of that, I think of the song, obviously. Unconditional, unconditionally, I will love you unconditionally. And what's amazing is God, his love is the greatest love. It, it is unconditional. That every single one of us in here has a lot of mess, but we've also got a lot of goodness. We've got a lot of sin and baggage, but we've got a lot of beautiful talents and gifts. And God loves every single one of us here, and he sees all of you, your thoughts, your actions, your feelings, and he says, I love you. He is the good shepherd. And guess what? In Psalm 23 with the good shepherd, it says, you know, God is my shepherd, I shall not want. And some of us think like, it's like, it's like a command, like, God is the shepherd, you shall not want, you know? Like, you'll want nothing. But no, no, no. When I think of that, I think of this like, God, if I really knew how much you loved me, I wouldn't want anything else. God, if I really knew how much you love me, I would never gossip. I would never make myself feel better than other people. God, if I really knew how much you love me, I would never lust after someone. I would never use someone. I would never want to be better than people because this, you know what I mean? So if I knew, God, how much you love me, if I knew that you were the good shepherd, how good you were, I wouldn't need anything else and I wouldn't even want anything else. And so I'm inviting you guys this weekend because when it comes to the shepherd, Jesus the shepherd is opening the gate to every, for every single one of you to enter into the gate. And the question this weekend is, are you going to enter? Are you going to respond? Because you know what's amazing? God is proposing his divine love to you. And as with a real proposal, you can't just walk away. You have to either say yes or no. Because even if you just go like this, that means no. But God is proposing his love story. He's proposing his divine love. He's saying, I'm the good shepherd. I want to take care of you. Will you let me? Will you let me walk with you when you feel alone? Will you let me walk with you when you're feeling scared, when you're feeling abandoned, when you're feeling bullied? Will you let me walk with you and guide you when you're near death? And are you gonna say yes or are you gonna say no? I'm inviting you this weekend to say yes. 